What's going on, everybody? My name is Kevin Ryan, host of the Broken Glasses Podcast. You can find that over on soundcloud.com slash broken glasses podcast. We're also available on iTunes. Today, I'm going to be playing That Dragon Cancer. This is a game that came out this past week and has made a little bit of a splash due to its subject material. Um, this game chronicles the story of Joel Green, the four-year-old son of developer Ryan Green, and his battle with cancer, which unfortunately claimed his uh, life in 2014. Uh, this game deals with the entire journey of that battle, what the family went through, what the son went through, um, and it is basically Ryan Green's attempt at communicating to the rest of the world just how special his son truly was to him and to his family. Um, people are actively avoiding this game. Some people, uh, understandably so. Many of us have been affected by cancer. And some people just do not want to even take the risk of experiencing that kind of emotional difficulty. Uh, personally, me, I have not lost someone who was especially close to me to cancer. Um, I've been around it, like many of you. I've seen what it can do, the pain it causes. But personally, um, it's never brought me the kind of pain that I imagine, you know, that, that Ryan Green's family went through. So uh, I wanted to play this game, uh, for one, because I really value... Uh, the ability of games as a medium to tell these kinds of stories in a way that perhaps films can't. Uh, and number two, because I I want to see if it could bring out that kind of emotion in me, if the game can succeed in doing that. Um, nonetheless, I'm sure it'll be a fantastic experience for what it's trying to do. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> ah, I've been sick all this year. It's crazy. The entire beginning of 2016 has been rough for me. Um, but let's let's dive right in. Uh, let's see how this goes. New game. I am a duck. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> before we go any further, one thing I did forget to mention is that the game actually uses audio from films that the family has made of each other, um, phone messages, journal entries, things like that. These are all real. So, what I'm guessing, what I'm hearing in the background was an actual trip to the lake that this family might have taken. And... This is the audio that we're hearing from that video. Okay. Um, it's kind of insane. So, I guess in the in the during the trip they were feeding the ducks, and now <laughs> in the game we're the duck. That's it's, it's nice. It's clever. Oh, guys, get Joel some bread. Mom, he threw the whole piece. <laughs> <laughs> well, Isaac, you gotta give him little pieces. He doesn't understand. Here you go, Joel. Here's a piece. Okay, no, you throw. Five white. Yeah. <laughs> but he, but he can't talk. It's true. 
Yeah. Do you want to talk? Yeah, no. Why can't Joel? Well, Joel got sick right after he turned one. And, um, kind of slowed him down a little bit, buddy. Yeah. So he's just slower than most kids. I think eventually he'll catch up. Do you think Joel will read? Yeah, I think Joel will read eventually. Well, I mean, of course, he's just delayed. Because, you know. Yeah. Um, you're supposed to be what? a boy, but he's a baby. He's a boy baby. <laughs> yep, he's a boy baby. <laughs> That's just about right. You know, there's lots of things Joel isn't good at, but there's some things he is good at. What is he good at? <laughs> Eating, laughing. <laughs> yeah. Good I'm good at that. <laughs> you are good at making him laugh. Why, how do you make him laugh? I yeah. fall down. Yeah. It's really funny when you fall down. He's good at doing this what he loves. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What does Joel love? Wawa. <laughs> in cups, bathtubs, and the warm, wet tongues and the cool fur of Das. And maybe the sweet moas of daily affection. And bye bye. And blown kisses. And more. Oh, always more. This full list of words. So few. I'm not sure what that was. Was that supposed to be some sort of narrator or all-knowing god? I don't know. Angels, maybe? Were those angels? Hmm. I really like the music uh, in this game so far. I'm a sucker for orchestral themes like this. And uh, it, it's really it's really lending itself to the tone of the game overall. So I'm theorizing right now that those are angels. Um, and they are discussing with each other what is happening and what is about to happen to Joel's family. And perhaps that's Ryan Green's way of depicting... What is pain without a word for it? Well, this. <laughs> what is hope without a word for it? Who is God? What is joy? It's interesting giving um, these angelic characters, I'm guessing angels or some other spiritual beings, um, they don't have infinite knowledge. They're arguing amongst each other. Are they going to understand? We won't know. Um, the fact that even they don't know, um, it's very human. Who am I to him? <laughs> Dada. <laughs> we can 
look over here. If any of you are wondering, I'm just clicking uh, with my mouse right now. weren't showing up. this happiness here and now we're going into where they uh, where they must have initially found out about his condition I'm assuming that these represent tumors I apologize if the commentary has been sparse. It's just it's the Fear nature of the game. Is cancer's preservative. Cancer's embalming oil. Hmm. And you, O oh accuser, are fear's oil sales. You're a snake. A serpent. A dragon with snuffed out coal on his breath, molting, talons broken from the struggle to free yourself of your own skin. We come to it.
chemo. Hey, do you want a rock? Okay, let's rock. There we go. It's interesting, these back and forths between a sort of um, uh, third party perspective and Joel's perspective. Oh, no, actually, um, I'm in dad's perspective here. <laughs> Thought it was Joel's. Well, let's look at the phone here. Hey, babe, I was just thinking, do you ever think maybe Joel can hear better than he's supposed to be able to? Because I know, like, it's supposed to be moderate to severe hearing loss, but sometimes, like today, he hears music playing before I do. So I saw him dancing, and I had to look around to hear that a song was playing. And I just don't, <laughs> like, if his hearing loss is that bad, I can't imagine. I don't know. I just wonder about it. Anyway, call me later. Bye. Ah, okay. Just had to find the right button, I guess. Oh. Oh. Um. Oh. So now we're we're at home now. I guess, or were we at home before? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but let's see. Entirely sure what's going on. <laughs> that was interesting. Am I dreaming now? Controlling Joel here. a strange perspective here. <laughs> Can't it's a bit tricky to judge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, fail. Or was I supposed to fail? Maybe I was supposed to fail that. Okay. That changes things a bit here. Oh, hey. Um, I just wanted to take a shower. Is that okay? Are you okay with Joel? Okay, thanks. <laughs> oh, no. 
I'm moving the stethoscope. <laughs> So a different spot on the dog's body corresponds with a different event. It's an interesting way to do that. Meeting the family, I guess. I'm assuming these are actual pictures that were drawn. Uh, we must be in the hospital. Maybe? Felt like a hospital. floor again so we have to get a new lock for the fridge do you oh it's so so hard to clean up eggs from the floor like they just spread around and they don't come clean no matter what you do so i was just so frustrated but you should have seen them together they were so proud of themselves joel and elijah just sitting there with their eggs isaac said he thinks they want to be cookers <laughs> all right talk to you soon bye Phone's almost dying. Hey, honey, we're on our way home from the hospital now. So if you wanted to preheat the oven starting in about 30 minutes, that would work, and we could throw in that lasagna. Um, do you know how they celebrate off-treatment day, like when kids are done with their treatments? I, I guess maybe you don't because you're not in the clinic as much as I am, but on someone's last day, they always bring them a cake, and they sing happy off-therapy day to you. Anyway, that happened today. I mean, it happens a lot, but today I cried. I just wanted that day so bad, you know? I just, like, we're not ever going to get that day. If he's better, we won't know that he's better. We don't get a day. Anyway, 
okay, call me if you can. Like, there's probably traffic, so I could talk on my way home. All right, bye. Hmm. Oh no. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh god. <laughs> what is going on? This is clearly a representation of Joel's mind or a child's mind. Always in first place. <laughs> Always winners. Never losers. Oh, wow. Is that everything he went through? That's what the go-kart thing was for. So happy to get out of there. So happy to be in that circular race of treatment after treatment after treatment, I guess. Only to discover that it's not over yet. Hmm. It's a visual <clears throat> example of what they were going through, how relieved they were to be out of that, to be done with all of those treatments, to come out in first place. Then you wreck. Scans. I love you, my friend. This is my favorite game. You want to see? Watch out, start it. <laughs> you touch it right here, then the big lion comes. The not scary lion. It's so loud. I can roar just like him. Yeah, you hear me roar? Why? Don't be afraid. You might want to cover your ears. She 
becomes animals. Tear swirls is my favorite. I'm controlling this light here. To what end, though? Oh, okay. I clicked, now he's riding a giraffe. <laughs> okay. It's a horse. Where do we go from here? Trying to understand the symbolism behind that particular uh, part. Perhaps it was his dreams. Oh, he was getting the scans. Could be that. This terrible routine, watching you, waiting for you to wake, hoping you will never remember these days of illness and treatment. One day, I'll bring you here, show you your tiny handprints on the wall, and you'll be annoyed that we all think of you as some big miracle. <laughs> Cancer will be such a small part of all you could grow to be. You will tire of hearing about it. You won't want to see the cards and notes I saved. And I won't mind at all. I'll hold the memories of this hard day. You just leave it behind. That tree has been a recurring theme. Um, this game was kickstarted, um, and I'm wondering if some of these cards represent messages from backers or from family on the development team. Others who have uh, lost loved ones to cancer. That tree keeps coming back. Hmm.
So, so far, I see what the game is doing. It's taking through you through all the steps, all the stages of this tumultuous journey that this family went through. Um, I don't know if this way of doing it has been entirely successful. Um, I don't know. It's hard to describe. It, it, it feels very segmented. What? Um, very disjointed, what? I think, in a way. It doesn't feel very natural, I guess. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. I feel on an interactive medium such as as games, you know, because that's that's I mean that's what separates games from other entertainment media, uh, such as film or television or even books is the element of interactivity and the transformative nature of video games. Uh, transformative meaning that even though other players of that Dragon Cancer are going to be experiencing this same core story how they play, the choices that they make, even down to like where they look, you know, where they direct my point of view, even looking left versus looking right, that kind of thing. That's that's transformative. Um it changes the <clears throat> the um the entire experience is unique to a certain degree to each player. And in other games, in other narrative-based games, like such, you know, like narrative-heavy games, I should say, uh, such as Gone Home, or um, oh, what's the other one I played? Um, d- damn, I can't. I'm having total mind fart. <laughs> uh, but I mean, Gone Home would be the best example. It 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 had a very natural progression. It was all very seamless. Uh, discovering that story between. Uh, its characters in that game, and and the and the sec- the fragments, the fragmented nature of this game's levels, uh, if you will, I think do it a disservice so far. It's not. I understand what the game is trying to do, but it hasn't emotionally resonated with me in any sort of meaningful way yet. Um, but we'll see. So let's. Enough about that. Enough game theory. <laughs> Let's uh let's progress here. Um What <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, this. Derp. Farmer Bill makes the pigs bacon for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> See at the top here how the sun has been moving from sunny days to stormy nights. The cows and the horses get together for cards at night. <laughs> Obviously, they're awaiting the news. Take a bubble bath. <laughs> Farmer Bill asked the horse to take the truck to town. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure I saw Farmer Bill doing that. <laughs> Farmer Bill separates the sheep from the goats. Sheep go to heaven. Goats go to town. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, guys. It's not good. Oh, no. 
current no, size no, 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 no. Size matters. If I know how big it is, I can, I can face it. I can size it up. And it's quite small at this point, but unfortunately the size isn't terribly important. Any recurrence means the chemotherapy has failed. This is a tragedy. Mm. I guess I have imagined it. I've imagined it a lot, but not like this. It's different. I thought I would sob uncontrollably or puke just right on the floor. I thought I'd shake or wail or something. I guess this is shock. Tragedy, he said. That's right. That's the perfect word for this. It's a tragedy. I wonder if he says that every time. He's crying a little. I love him for that. He's not callous. He's genuinely sad. She is too. So there just aren't any treatment options that are curative. We're very good at end-of-life care. We're very good at managing the pain and masking symptoms at the end of life. How long are we talking about? Prediction time again. No matter what I say, they'll wish it was longer. But sometimes, longer is worse. A few weeks to maybe four months. Is Nick crying? How long are we talking about? How am I going to hold it together now? A few weeks to maybe four months. Science, it's simpler. Measurable. I have A, B, and subtract C, and I get this result, and I can do something to control it, or at least have the sense that I'm controlling it. But now all we have left is a miracle, and miracles are fickle. Hmm. They don't always come, and we don't always know why. What if Joel's miracle doesn't come? I hope he lives. I've always hoped. But now I can't do anything but hope. Oh, radiation. At least we can do something. Hope doesn't require signing papers or driving to hospitals or holding Joel in my lap. Hope is for something someone else has to do for us. And when doctors can't, well, invisible Jesus must. We're so sorry. Oh, God, I do not want a replacement baby. If that was your plan, I am not on board. I don't want some new baby to help me move on. I would not have chosen it. Oh, God, Joel has to live or I will not love this baby. You're welcome. I'm sorry, It's not good. You know what? Baby, please be clear. Oh, wow. How big is it? How big is it? Well, the thing that kind of goes with it. And it's quite small at this point. But unfortunately, the size isn't very important. It's very hard to do with your experience. This is a tragedy. With an ATRT, as soon as you have an occurrence at any time, it is fatal. It is only a matter of time before it's spread back to several locations. We have already thrown all the chemotherapy we have at it. We can't continue to use them to the that we know is going to be So there's just not a really big job out of the
This scene actually reminds me of a saying I once heard of a man who was on a boat in the middle of a storm. He was scared. But he remembered not to be scared because Jesus was with him. Where was he? In the back of the boat. Taking a nap. Something along those lines. I don't remember. I probably butchered that story. But... many things stirring around in my spirit that I have to write to settle myself and find God's wisdom in the midst of chaos. I'm scared I won't be strong enough to face the things we might have to face in the coming weeks and months. But then I remember how much grace God gave us to walk out everything we've already faced. I've never felt completely overwhelmed, and I've never felt alone. So no matter what comes next, and I truly cannot even begin to guess how this will go. I know we will be carried. I want to shout out, look what God is about to do. Watch how he delivers Joel. And at the same time, I want to roll up in a silent ball and wait it out with fear and trembling, so aware of all my doubt but yet convinced that my doubt is insignificant compared to God's faith. Oh, we're a bird. I had been in this room with my father before, during the brief window where he wasn't dying but was instead getting better. That wasn't the man I saw this time. I saw the other one, the one who cried out and needed holding, the one who fell asleep for 20 seconds and then woke up a different person each time. There was a clear part right in the middle of it, a minute or so, where everything was calm before his tour of hell resumed. That was goodbye, even if no one said it. I don't think I will ever get better after having seen that. I think this is the kind of knowing that stays with you. I can reach into my pocket now and find it there. I am at Seattle Children's Hospital, and nobody wants to be here. Even as an internationally recognized temple of healing, every inch of it is terror. Every cubic inch of every room that is not occupied by terrified children and terrified parents is filled to its capacity with a terror wholly unique to that family, which no other person has any power to comprehend. There is art on the walls and rooms, which is designed to evoke a jungle of some kind, and I resent it. Every giraffe, 
is my sworn enemy. The ravenous reverie of waking is but a distant memory. Or was it a dream? I can't remember the last time I woke up hungry. Not so long ago, carefree, welcoming the challenge of yoga on paddle boards, springing through the rain and over puddles at the reservoir track. Weathering several storms since entering the first battlefield over two years ago. A succession of precise scalpels, high energy beams, and pharmacological strategies a journey no one asks for. Still standing, spirit unyielding, but not the same. With each treatment, an imprint, evidence of what came before. Willing rogue mutinous cells to yield to my current tailored chemical onslaught. Stay put and do not multiply. Or better yet, disappear altogether. By the will of God, through the tools of modern medicine, with the support of family and friends. Onward. because if the trial works really well, then maybe we'll stay in California for a really long time. Like as long as it keeps helping Joel, then we wanna stay and do the best we can for him and stay there where he's getting help. But if the medicine starts to not work, as soon as it's not helping him, I promise we'll come back home. Uh, are we going to Disneyland? Yeah, of course. <laughs> what do you think, Caleb? You okay with leaving for so long? I'm kind of excited, but I'm kind of not. I mean, I think it'll be fun, but I just don't like missing school. Oh yeah. <laughs> what kind of kid is that? That's amazing. I hate to school, huh? Like, why? Well, I just hate having all the homework that I have to do. Oh. Oh, practical thinker. Your teachers are gonna send me homework, and we'll just try to do a little bit of it every day. So it won't be that bad, but they'll still be fun stuff we can do. How many kids get to go and go on an adventure to California in the middle of school year? I'd say that's pretty cool. And we're going to be staying in the middle of San Francisco near Golden Gate Park, and there's a museum, and there's uh, there's a Botanic Garden, and there's the Golden Gate Bridge, and water, and a prison, and <laughs> yeah, a prison. Not leaving in the prison. <laughs> Hopefully we can get out of it. So we're going to have lots of fun, and we're going to spend lots of time as a family together. And lots of time with Joel, too. Yeah. I'm kind of sad trip, even though it's fun. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay and sad. It's kind of all of those things, mm -hmm. huh? Is it all the things, Caleb? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to see Joel, you know, like, needing so much help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, like... For me, sometimes I'm kind of excited and sometimes I'm kind of sad. And I just kind of feel all of that. So it's okay if you guys feel all of that too because I feel all of those things. I can attest to the awesomeness that is San Francisco. Just throwing that out there. My sister, her fiance, and my niece live out there. And damn, is it awesome! <laughs> Definitely go to San Fran if you ever have a chance. I remember the day I was diagnosed. I remember the hallucinations from the high fever of five year olds' nightmares. I remember my mother silently weeping in the doctor's office. I remember friends and family gathered around my hospital bed in prayer. I remember the two-hour ambulance ride to St. Jude where they could better care for me. I remember the two and a half years of weekly chemo treatments, the numerous lumbar punctures and bone marrow aspirates. 
I remember doctors Bell, Dahl, and Kalinsky, nurses Jean, Judy, and Dale, Miss Chris in social work, Darlene in travel, all part of the team that cared for me. I am a walking memorial to their successes. I remember the other patients I'd see each time I went to the hospital for chemo. I remember when some stopped coming. I knew what that meant. I remember the years of summer camp for children with cancer, children like me. I remember their laughter and the midnight talks of fears and joys, normal kid stuff, some less so. I remember when some stopped coming. I knew what that meant, but I remember them. I am and other survivors are memorials to those who lost their fights. We've been through so much already. This is a new degree of tragedy, but it's not so much different from the struggle we've already been living. We pressed into God. We pressed into faith. We fought until we found peace. We stood in peace when our flesh wanted to strive more. We stood in peace when it started to feel like laziness or foolishness or both. <laughs> we waited for God to direct us specifically in prayer because all the directions we had initiated had not panned out. We prayed for no nausea because that's what we felt in our spirits we were supposed to pray, even though we'd prayed it countless times before while Joel continued to vomit. We saw one small miracle and then another. We waited to pray specific things until we were given specific direction and we saw bigger miracles. And yet, if you asked either of us if we were doing enough, trying hard enough, we would say no. Hmm. As this long day draws to a close, I am tired, but not sleepy. My face is puffy from crying. I have a dry throat and dry hands, a slight headache, and a desire to write down absolutely everything. I want to describe the feeling of being entirely empty and entirely resolute. I want to explore how I can be deeply sad and incredibly hopeful at the same time. I want to talk about holding Joel's hand, walking down the hall wanting to soak in the moment, to memorize the feeling of having his hand and mine, to let it matter, and then hating that my thoughts swing to, because what if I can't hold his hand one day? And hating that thought, wishing I could just appreciate each second of Joel without that appreciation spilling into the pre-morning I refuse to do because I believe he will live. But instead of fighting the brief thoughts of mourning, Choosing to fight instead that lie that says that those thoughts betray some doubt, some mistrust of God, when I know that those thoughts make me human. That God knows I am human. He doesn't make Joel's victory dependent on me never feeling unsure. Expectation is so maddening sometimes. Do you know what she wrote on the eve of Joel's first surgery? The one back in January when we first found the tumor? I seriously feel like a kid on Christmas Eve. <laughs> I'm pleading for God to spare his life. And I'm tempted to despair because self-inspection leads me to conclude I shouldn't expect much of anything. <sighs> and yet my wife is expecting a surprise party from the Lord replete with presents, supernatural miracles. <sighs> I envy her. Hmm. Papa, 
up in bed, boys. Let's go. Boys, get in bed. Oh, can you at least tell us a story? Um, <sighs> sure. Okay. This is the story of a very brave knight named <laughs> Joel. Joel the baby knight? <laughs> yes, Joel the baby knight. But he's also Joel the very brave knight. And he was being chased by a dragon named Cancer. Oh, wow. <laughs> I can throw spears with the space bar. <laughs> Where does the dragon live? Um, in a forest. Is the dragon big? Very big. Oh. Does the dragon breathe fire? So much fire, you guys. So, Joel has armor, like a sword and a shield and stuff? Ooh, or maybe a spear? Yeah, that sounds good. So, so brave Sir Joel with his sword and his shield and his spear and his super jumping ability was being chased by a dragon named Cancer. What other superpowers does he have? Uh, he also has grace. That's not a superpower. <laughs> it's the best superpower. Do you guys know what grace means? Yeah, it's kind of like help. Yeah, it's kind of like help. You know, and he's not the only one who's ever tried to fight this dragon. Some very brave knights have fought this dragon and lost. And some are able to drive the dragon off. And then they can go home and they can keep fighting for a while. And the kingdom is safe. Joel's been fighting this dragon for a long time, huh? A long time. <laughs> but Joel found a nice empty cave where he could rest. And it seems like the dragon couldn't find him. But just when he thought that the danger was past, the dragon found his hiding spot and came after him in the cave. Well, that dragon's going to kill Joel. Joel's going to lose. Why do you say that? Because Joel is just a baby. Baby can't kill Joel. You're right. The baby can't kill the dragon. But that's the best part of the story. God fights for Joel. So he fights that dragon cancer right with Joel. And we know that God can win even if Joel can't. That's grace. What about Tim from Church Mom? He died from cancer. Wasn't God fighting for him? Tim, he had to Of course, God fought for Tim too. Tim fought so well. He was so brave, so strong. But God let him rest. It may have seemed like a dragon man, but it's Tim died. We know that Tim's in heaven, that he's with God, that God is so proud of him. That was weird. Um, it's a little strange to be playing a 2D game about a boy who died from cancer and then dying in that little mini game is 
off-putting, I should say, to a certain degree. Um, I understand what they were trying to do, and it was cute, but I'm not entirely certain that it was the best thing to do there. drowning. How can you sit there like that? Despair doesn't help anything. Neither does false hope. And I'm not despairing. How can you say false hope? You're drowning! Well, you're missing your oars. And you don't even know where you're going. And yet you're so sure you're going to get there. It's better than drowning. Enjoy floating on the surface like you always do. There's nothing deep about drowning. Just get in the boat. You have to let me feel this. Someone has to. That's not fair. I love him as much as you do. I just really believe we're going to be okay. Expectation looks like denial, but seeing Joel dying does not make me any less certain that he will be healed. In some ways, I feel more certain, not because the same doubts don't come to me, but because I know that they will not be entertained much longer, because this chapter is almost finished, and we will have an ending one way or the other. So the doubts and fears that make me reaffirm that even if I'm wrong, this is where I stand, become less and less powerful. People's conciliatory words of comfort meant to reassure us and help us accept Joel's death don't sit well with me. They aren't offensive because I know the heart behind them is good, but they are weak words because it's so obvious to me that death is the given. I don't have to work to be ready for it or accept it. It is coming whether I would accept it or not. It has been coming slowly for so long. I don't have to work to understand that Joel is dying. It is obvious. Heaven is amazing. And so I'm not worried about death. It will come regardless of where I stand and wait. But now, death is circling close enough for redemption to finally feel closer. Part of the story where a daring rescue can thwart death's intentions just in time, perhaps when it looks like it's already too late. I want to watch for that. I don't need to focus my eyes on death, studying it in its slow progression. Its course is already clear. But there is a glory that is coming, and its journey to us is wild and quick and frightening, and I want to be watching for that glory. I want to stand trembling in awe before God and his power. Not sure that this thing that we've asked for is something we can quite manage, but trying anyway. Death is the given, but the life that is possible now for Joel, the miracle that could come now that death is so close, is something worth pursuing, worth risking 
everything to see with my own eyes. So what we're seeing here are two different ideologies. You have an incredibly hopeful woman who is driven by faith and her husband who is slowly losing himself, it seems. I guess I need to guide him upwards. trying but I suppose the lesson here is that you can't he's drowning in it <laughs> I'm guessing that's the lesson here, but I, I don't know if maybe I'm just doing this wrong. Maybe I have to go down. Oh, I did have to go down. Oh my. Sunset looks pretty from here. The orange glow cast on the wall. Better than the muted colors of this hospital. I wonder why they choose blues and greens. <sighs> they, the ones who choose the colors that heal. <laughs> Green for life. Blue. Hmm. For comfort? Purple stripes to hide the stains. <laughs> huh. This chair is too small and sticks to my skin. I hate vinyl. Blue, purple. <laughs> Hmm, the ocean maybe? No, under the ocean. Silent, warm, and salty, like tears. He won't stop crying. I don't blame him. He feels miserable. I hate that we're here. I hate that he's sick. I just want to feel better. Here. 
Don't. <laughs> Here we go. Bouncing around. <laughs> Do you like that? <laughs> oh, I love your giggle. Bounce around. <laughs> Is that funny? A bounce, a bounce, a bounce, bounce, bounce. <laughs> oh, he won't stop crying. It's the box. I don't catch it. <laughs> he drinks it greedily. Big, deep gulps. Okay, Jolie, that's enough. Breathe, kiddo. And he does. And I wipe his face of snot, and tears, and juice. And then he vomits, and I catch it. I always catch it. I know you're thirsty, buddy, but you'll throw it up. No, don't grab too hard. You'll squirt all the juice out. Here, let me have it. It's so late, Joel. Lay down. I can't hold you. I can't make you feel better. Okay, buddy, okay, I'll hold you. Oh, Joel Bug. You look so miserable. No! Don't hit your head on the bars, Joel. Joel! Joel! I know you're mad. Please stop. Please. St stop. I shake. I weep. I pray. I plead. I need. Peace. I am empty. You are. I don't know how much you are. You are there. I want you here. I want you to call my son. And you've brought us this far. Here, not dead, not there, with you. Oh God, I want to be here with me. Please. Peace. He sleeps. Thank you. There's a story in the Bible where Jesus and his disciples are on a boat. And 
and a furious storm hits the sea and everyone thinks they're gonna die. And where do you think Jesus is? Rowing alongside them? No. He's asleep. In the back of the boat. <laughs> so his disciples are freaking out and wake him up and they say, Don't you care if we drown? So Jesus gets up and he says to the storm, Quiet. Be still. And the sea becomes completely calm. Then he asks his disciples why they are so scared and if they have any faith at all. Like he was frustrated with them. Because even though Jesus said, let's go to the other side of the lake, his disciples thought he was going to just let them die. Just and true king, but now we have to do it as a bond. <laughs> My first edict as king is we dance like, like monkeys for 30 minutes. <sighs> Maybe like five minutes? Nope, nope, babe. He said 30. We must do what he says. This is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Did they really do that for 30 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> My second edict as king is allow you kids to be the king. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Good joke, King Isaac. Mother, Elijah, was that too loud for you? Oh, I'm sorry, kiddo. You were too loud, my friend. Does die, will Jesus even care? Will he weep for him as he did for Lazarus? Will he weep for me? I think greater than my fear of death is that of insignificance. Or rather, my default assumption is that my thoughts and passions and loves and the stuff of my being are insignificant. 
How could the creator of all that is and ever was love my son as he did Lazarus? And could my soul stranded on this blue raft, awash in a sea of stars, ice and dust, matter enough to him to turn his hand in mercy? Jesus wept for Lazarus. Five minutes later, he raised Lazarus from the dead. known we both end up in the same place. We always do. It just scares me every time. I just really believe he'll be healed. I, I know you believe too, just when you act like that, I get all unsure. I don't know that. What do you mean? I just hope that. Joel, come to the 
He was not in the wind. He was not in the earthquake. He was not in the fire. He was here in a gentle whisper. So here we are, and the air is emptier without his laugh, and yet our hearts are still full, but with a different drink. And this ride we've been on for so long is silent, and so also the Lord. And so we sit here in this new silence, and long for the music to start again, and for the disc to spin again, even if it means going round and round for many more years. For at least we would be moving and Joel would be laughing here on earth and not only in heaven. But in this space, I sense his silence is only because he is drawing his breath. And now we know love and longing, empty and full, all in one moment. And I am grateful that we loved him well and that we miss him well. And I hope that in the Lord's next breath, he will whisper his love song to you, his beloved, and that you will know him differently and more deeply. But now we grieve in silence, but not without his presence.
I'm glad you're here. I love it here. I bet you would like it too. Look at all of these pancakes. Did you ever see pancakes like this? They're big as me. A big one is for me. A little one is for my dog. I always wanted a dog, and now I got one. I even got to name it. Banjo! Whoa, Bubbles? I love Bubbles. Look, I can touch one. Mandy's a catch a bubble. She likes to bite them. I want more bubbles. I love the bubbles. Come here, Mandy. Have another pancake. Man, you love syrup. Me too. Syrup is my favorite pie. <laughs>